So, in this chapter, we will learn how to develop and deploy an Android application. So, first of all, if you want to develop an Android application, you have to use an editor. You can choose any editor you want, Emacs or Vim, but I suggest you to use Android Studio. Android Studio was developed for the purpose of building Android application. So, Android Studio is based on IntelliJ IDEA, and it provides tools to decompile, debug, and in introspect uh, your code. You can also refactor, and you can also use Gradle uh, based on Groovy to manage your dependencies. And so you can build tool chain, and you can also use the lint analyzer to uh, report bug. And finally, you can create your own uh, device through the Android Virtual Device Manager. And so if you want a device with 800 gigabyte of uh, RAM, you can. It's useless, but you can. And finally, you can debug your application uh, through the bridge uh, for debugging. And you can have a logcat manager, which centralize all your logs. So normally, we have a video here. So this is how we can install Android Studio. So you have to click Accept, OK. Download your application. OK. Then you just have to install it. It's pretty simple. OK. Some management here. Then you open the tarball. We can also note that uh, Android Studio is available on other platforms. Here it's macOS, but you can use it on Linux, for instance. OK, and so, so we can run the Android Studio application. OK. Then you choose where you want your application to be started. Then start a new project. Then you give a name to your application. OK, you fix your company and some details. Then you can choose the version of Android. And this is written, you target 6% of uh, the phone and tablet that are available. You choose an activity. We will go back to this later. You choose the main activity. So I will go back to activity later. But basically, you can consider for now that an activity is uh, only the application. And this is it. You have an editor like Xcode. OK, there are some time to to set up. OK, so there are some few files that you have to know. Here, it's the main activity, so the main, the core of your application here. You can see that it's pretty short. There are a few lines of code. Then you can have here some XML. The XML will describe your view. Here you can see the view. We will fix this view according to our purpose. Here we want to add some checkbox and something else I don't remember. OK. So here we can see it's kindergarten mode uh, suggested by Fabrice. But since you have to target a lot of uh, devices, you have to have such a management. You cannot manage all programmatically. OK. I add some components. And finally, I will run the application. So I'll have to, OK, there are some menu here. You cannot see the, the menu, OK. You will build your own device, OK. Here you have a lot of uh, device you can choose, whatever. 
You choose the version you want. You download it. Finish. And you can finish the instantiation of your device. And run it. And now you have an emulator that is run using QMU. I don't know if you uh, uh, know QMU. And there is the operating system running on it. It's a Linux. And you can now run your application. Maybe. And this is your application. No big deal. OK? So there are a few uh, files that you have to know when you develop an Android application. The first one, and the most important one, is the Android manifest.xml. This file will lead you to a lot of troubles. You have to declare all the permissions uh, that your application requires inside of this file. So this is the most important file in your application. Second of all, there is the Java directory. If you develop in Java, you can also develop in Kotlin, but here we develop in Java. The Java directory um, allows you to develop the, the whole application. So this is where you will have test and the core of your application. Finally, the last directory you have to know is the REST directory. The REST directory will handle all the resources of your application as well as all the layout of your application. For instance, um, the GUI, the GUI, the user interface, will be displayed inside of this directory. OK, so I already told you that Android is a Linux, but it's a Linux with container. And each application is inside a container. OK? And so the application cannot go outside of the container, but there are also uh, minor differences. When you develop in Java, you have a Java virtual machine which is run. OK? And so the bytecode Java is run on this uh, Java virtual machine. When you develop some Android application, this is not the Java virtual machine which is used, but the Dalvik virtual machine. And this, uh, so this means that the code, the bytecode Java, will be translated into the Dalvik bytecode. OK? So this is for most of uh, the Android phone today. If you have a phone that is quite recent, you can have the option to use the art, the Android runtime. Uh, and this means that you can compile your bytecode Dalvik inside into some native code which means that we have bytecode, which is translated into native code. OK? So to run the application, uh, we can use the AVD uh, manager, as I showed you before. But you can also uh, run it on a device. And to do that, you just have to connect your phone on, the, on your laptop or your PC and to click on uh, and run. And this will work. To make it work, you have to enable the developer mode. So you have to tap a certain amount of time on the build number of your device. So it's a little complicated, but this will enable some developer mode. And then you can say, OK, I want to develop on this uh, phone. So to sum up, uh, your application uh, can be developed quite easily using the Android Studio framework uh, software. And you have tool chain that you have to use if you want to develop an application. Okay? And finally, if you want to develop your application and deploy it on some store, you can use uh, the Play Store for $25. And if you want to develop your application and provide it for free, you can provide it through an Aptoid uh, server running on Linux. And so you can have your own Aptoid server and provide your application. 
You have to note that in this case, the application will not be secure. Why? Because any, anyone can build its own, its own up, up to its server, and in this case, we cannot say anything about the security of application.